Hey y'all, this is Wendy. This is Wendy's Pura de Perfume and today I'm just going to do a perfume review on a scent that I've talked about a lot on my channel because I really enjoy it and it's also a vintage and vintage is my favorite and this one is a perfume from Hermes from 1961, Kalash. This is actually the first perfume that they put out that was marketed toward women. Um, I think their first perfumes came out in the 50s so Maybe that's interesting that they started with men first. I don't know, or maybe not. Maybe it's maybe it doesn't mean anything. But anyway, this is their first perfume that they marketed toward women. Now, that being said, for today's tastes, this is not a women's feminine perfume. It's not what we think of today. That has changed greatly since this was put out 60 years ago. Um, you know, it's it's fun. It is funny how those things change. I don't care what anybody says. Not that things can't feel deeply like personally masculine or feminine to people, but um, and there there are things that are in society that we just take for granted that are masculine or feminine. But at the same time, that whole idea is so it's so subjective and it changes according to the times and it changes according to marketing and it just changes according to what people are going through and social upheavals and styles and fashions and it just changes so anyway keep that in mind it's doesn't it's not a women's perfume like we know today because this perfume is above all it is so woody and I love it because I love woody perfumes I love woods I love oak moss I love sandalwood so this type of thing is right up my alley it's not sweet at all it's a little bit tiny bit floral but um even the florals and everything else is just buried under the wood so so let's just say this is my uh, my coaster. <laughs> so imagine this is the perfume, right? And then all these little, um, the grain and the wood is all the accents. So if there is a rose note or if there is a vetiver note, well, vetiver is kind of woody, but if there is a, a rose or a gardenia or, um, you know, a lemon note or anything like that, that is going to be the grain. And then this, this is going to be the perfume. This is the perfume. It just knocks you over the head with the woods. Um, so as far as the top goes, like I said, it's woody. It's really, really soapy too. It's an extremely aldehyde, aldehydic soapy perfume. And on the top, there's tons of lemon and cypress. That is the only greenery that I smell in here. There's a lot of like that, which I, I God, I just adore it. That like really bitter, fresh cypress that just smells like you just ripped off some needles off a tree or something. So lemon, cypress, and aldehydes on the top. Um, as the perfume settles down, they're... You know, it depends on how much I wear and how warm it is outside. Sometimes I feel like I don't smell any florals at all. And then sometimes I can detect them more than others. But the florals are are secondary. So there's a lot of white florals in here, like gardenia and jasmine and lily of the valley. Probably mostly lily of the valley because lily of the valley is soapy. Um, there is a little bit of rose in this too. Um, and along with the lily of the valley, the biggest floral note, if you can even call it that because it's a root, but the iris, the iris root, the orris is huge. The orris is enormous. And in this, in this perfume, the, the iris is, it is both woody and it's also leathery. So it kind of gives off, it just gives off a feeling of leather. I don't, I don't think there's any leather notes in here, but as far as like actual notes from, you know, what Hermes says is in here, but um, the, the iris to me is a little bit leathery. So the entire structure of the perfume is still woody, but as it dries down, it turns into oak moss and cedar and vetiver and sandalwood and all those wonderful woody notes. And if anyone needs a break from what we consider the zeitgeist of now of woody, which is now in Broxen and Cashmere and Isoe Super, none of that is in here. Now, granted, the bottles that I have are pretty old. I don't know what Hermes is doing in 2022, um, but I, I feel like they're a good perfume company that does use good materials so i'm not saying that it, they don't use any of those hormone chemicals but um the woods in here are not faux woods they're not laundry detergent woods they're they're real woods there is real oak moss in here there is sandalwood in here there is vetiver and there is cedar and there is all those woody musky things that are not feminine anymore but at one time that was considered to be a feminine a feminine perfume so not sweet at all a little bit floral it's a floral woody musk but a little bit floral little and most of the florals if you like if you like white flowers that's what's in here is white flowers white flowers and iris not not um not pink flowers not 
you know, not red roses, you know, nothing like that. So I don't feel like this wears particularly strong. Um, I think for most people, this is going to be so different from what anyone, from what we're all used to smelling that I think if you just wore a couple of sprays, you would be, you'd be good to go. I think you would smell elegant and I think you would smell very serious, <laughs> a little starchy, a little soapy, you know, but, um, that being said, this isn't like a, I'm going to punch you in my face, in the face type of, type of strength for this perfume. Now in the nineties, they did put out, um, a flanker to this. Uh, Kalesh Soie de Parfum, which is basically a nice way of saying that this is the Eau de Parfum. This is the Eau de Toilette, and then the 90s they put out an Eau de Parfum. Soie just means silk. I don't think that this is particularly silky. Um, maybe they just, I don't know why they called it that. I don't think it's particular. It's not, here's the thing is that this is not like a, oh, this is Kalesh for the 90s. Like, this is very faithful. This is not updated if anything this smells just as vintage if not more vintage as the old stuff so um Hermes did not do what say like you know Givenchy did with Linterdite and say this is this is Linterdite you know we had this other perfume that smells this one way all these years ago and this has nothing to do with that this has everything to do with this not only are these guys cousins they're like fraternal twins um, and true to form, this is this is stronger. The Eau de Parfum from the 90s is stronger than the Eau de Toilette. Um, it's more concentrated. It's more soapy. I actually feel like the florals, while they're still drowning in woods, the florals have a little bit more presence and a little bit more effervescence to them. Like they they are released from the woody structure a little bit more than the old than the, than the old Kalash. Um, but same thing though. I feel like this is like this triple milled bar of soft soap and it's just embedded with all those woods so like a floral soap embedded with vetiver and sandalwood and oak moss and you know aldehydes on the top and um you know sandalwood and oak moss on the bottom this i think now this bottle is getting old i think it's starting to change a little bit i don't think it's going bad but i don't detect like a bright lemony opening and i don't detect so much of this greenery as far as the cypress goes but um very faithful and I love this and super, super vintage. So either one of these I think would be, would be good, whichever one you find if you're, if you're interested in, in, in Kalesh. Um, and that's pretty much it. I like to wear this a lot. If this, I don't know why this is a springtime perfume for me, but springtime, um, but like now springtime when it's not, it's not warm out. I still need to wear a coat. Um, actually the other day it was like, the high was like 13, <laughs> like yesterday or the day before yesterday. So that kind of spring. I think that the best way to wear this would be to just do one or two sprays because the the sillage the sillage is going to be close. The longevity is still going to be six to eight hours, and um, it's just going to be a little a little a little spritz of seriousness, you know, a woody seriousness. And obviously, um, if I have not made this clear enough, any men that love woody perfumes, just try this out. It's it would it's perfectly it's perfectly masculine, perfectly masculine for for anybody, or maybe even just perfectly androgynous because that's kind of what it is too. Please, someone please tell me that you have at least smelled this or heard of this. I know that this perfume is not really talked about or around this much anymore. The nice thing about Hermes is that they're not owned. Hermes is owned by Hermes. They're not owned by LVMH or L'Oreal or anything. So they still take care of their back catalog. I mean, ingredients get banned or they become unavailable, but they seem like a company that, in my experience at least, they don't discontinue everything every 20 minutes. They don't reformulate every 20 minutes. Their materials they use are good. So, you know, good for Hermes. I'm, I'm glad they're still around and I'm glad that they take care of their perfume history because that's what this is to me. This smells like history. This smells like the way things used to be. And, you know, I'm a sucker for that sort of thing. So anyway, tell me if you like this video. Tell me what you think. Tell me if you love Kalesh or if you've worn it or someone in your family has worn it. And let me know and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.